Oh, when I finally die, although I don't believe it will ever happen, I want my gravestone to say, here lies Ryan. He loved his wife, he loved his children, and he loved the Legend of Zelda. The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap holds a special place in my heart. It came out right at the end of the Game Boy Advance's lifetime, and everyone knew it was going to be the last Zelda game made from the classic top-down perspective. And I did not know how to handle that. I mean, I loved Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, but there was something just magical, something special about top-down Zelda. If it was good enough for A Link to the Past, then it was good enough for me. But at last, the Minish Cab was the last ride, and thankfully, it was a memorable one. The game starts out like most Zelda games do. You are a young, capless Link, and you are asked to the Pickery Festival by Princess Zelda. Nothing can go wrong, right? Well, things do go wrong, and Zelda is turned to stone, and it is up to Link to save her. Link soon meets Elzo, a Minish who got transformed into a mix between a bird and a cat. He becomes friends with Link and joins him on his quest. And because he doesn't have legs, he rides on top of Link's head. This is where Link first gets that green hat that will stay with him throughout the series. Link's quest requires him to restore power to the mythical Pickery Sword. You will grow to love Elzo with his funny comments and actions. This is how he quickly became my favorite of Link's companions. <laughs> Minish Cap introduces some new things to the Zelda formula. While A Link to the Past had you going back and forth between worlds, Minish Cap has you going back and forth between sizes. There is a new race here, the Minish. They are a race of small people who are invisible to humans. With the help of Elzo, Link can shrink down to Minish size and see Hyrule from a whole new perspective. This will help you with puzzle solving with some areas only being accessible when you are Minish size. These moments also look really great. With objects like raindrops becoming boulders and leaves that are bigger than Link. It really makes you feel like you are the size of a thumbnail. And this wouldn't be a Zelda game without items to help you explore. Of course some staples like the boomerang and shield are back, but new is the gust jar. This can be used to suck up enemies and shoot out gusts of wind. It comes in handy and you will feel comfortable with it right away. Also new are Keenstones, which are broken medallions you'll find throughout your adventure. Most of the characters in the game have Keenstone pieces, and if you find the other half and combine them, you can unlock things in Hyrule, such as new areas opening up or treasure chests. It really encourages you to explore everywhere. The game truly looks amazing. Link is animated very nicely, and the world of Hyrule really comes to life. The game is squeezing every little ounce of power out of the GBA, but it goes beyond just the graphics. It's the little tricks, like when Link is minish sized, that really bring you into the world. With the graphics, the characters, and classic gameplay, it makes this game one of the best in the series, which is saying a lot. If this is as it seems to be, in the last Zelda from this perspective, it is great to see the last entry be this good.